I vote a set. Welcome to the Bayou, a place where legends are born and many have witnessed them. From Coach Dale to Shaq, Joey, JD to Eddie Kennison. You come to Death Valley or P-Mac, expect that voodoo. Top speed like it's 4-2, and nobody's catching voodoo. Represent the Chuck and WM no matter what. From gospel to a legend, that's what's up. Well, everyone, welcome to uh, this edition to Go To Legends podcast. My name is Eddie Kennison. I will be your host for the, the life and duration of this awesome podcast that God put on my heart a couple years ago. And uh, here we are bringing it to fruition. And uh, I'm just going to kind of give you guys a, a little bit about what this podcast is, how it's kind of. Uh, taking shape in, in a direction that uh, has been put on my heart to be able to go with this podcast. But first, let me tell you, thank you for tuning in. I ask you that you you like, you share, you subscribe uh, to all of the go-to legends uh, social media platforms. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and uh, we're working on other channels, but those for right now. Second thing I'd like to tell you is that if no one has told you today, let me be the first to tell you that I love you with the love of Christ and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it and be a light that shines so bright today that it has the impact to save someone's life. So here we go. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eddie Kennison. I was born and raised in Lake Charles, Louisiana played football since I was seven years old and uh, had no idea about the, the true game of football and where it could potentially lead. I just remember my mom and dad being avid NFL football fans. My dad, Pittsburgh Steelers fan. My mom, a Dallas Cowboy fan. And it was always a tussle on Sunday if the, if the Steelers and the Cowboys played at the same time. Like, who was going to get to watch the game that day? And that's kind of how it brewed up and how football came to be a part of my life. And then playing outside, you know, on the street with my friends to uh, get a good feel of just being outside because we didn't have like all of the fun games that, you know, the kids have today. And soon enough, I, I figured out that I was a little bit faster. Uh, I was a little bit more uh, athletic than most of the kids in the neighborhood. Now we had some pretty athletic kids, but I was just running faster and a little bit more athletic. And if you guys can remember, we played a game in the backyard. It was called scramble. You toss the ball up and you had to, you know, whoever got the ball, you had to run one way or the other to the touchdown without getting tackled. Well, I can say that uh, I didn't get tackled too often. And so the, the love of football just continued to grow uh, in, in those early stages and uh, I can remember way back about seven or eight years old when this, when this all started. And then going in and playing Pop Warner football, I remember my team winning the, the, the championship game for Pop Warner football. And then moving into uh, middle school and high school and playing high school uh, in Lake Charles at Washington Marion High School. And uh, it was just one of those times where uh, I had moved away to Houston for a little bit. Then I moved back to Lake Charles uh, my junior year. And uh, I, I just remember lining up at Washington Marion uh, with our then head coach, Robert Laverne, and my wide receiver coach, Brent Washington. Both guys played football at Southern. And it, that's really where I got the true idea of learning the game of football, you know, studying film, watching film. Uh, talking football and talking football verbiage. And on from Washington Marion, you know, we, we went and we played in, in a, a state championship game uh, against a local rivalry. Uh, all Louisiana people has probably heard of this school, John Curtis. And, uh, and from there, uh, my senior year at Washington Marion, uh, I began to receive letters uh, from every major university that you can possibly imagine across the United States. And I ultimately, I, I picked four schools to take visits. Uh, I picked Texas a and I picked Michigan, I picked Florida State, and then ultimately LSU. And I'll tell you guys, this is part of what I'll be asking our guests when they ultimately come on, 
how did you start? Where did you get your love for your particular sport and how did you get to LSU and beyond? So I get to uh, uh, my recruiting visits during that time and I go to Michigan and this is in December, right? And if you've ever been to the Midwest or somewhere near Michigan in December, being a Southern guy, it was God awful cold. And when I stepped off the plane, I knew immediately, I remember telling myself, I will not be going to Michigan. So after that visit, I went to Florida State the next weekend. And I, on Friday, they, I, I arrived at Florida State and they took me to the beach that day. And I said, this is the place where I'm going to play football. And I committed on Friday night. And on Saturday morning, I had a, a meeting with the then head coach. I won't say names. If you guys want to, you can go in and see who the head coach was in 1992. And he walks into his office and he says, Mike, I'm sure glad you're going to be a Seminole. And I looked up at the head coach at the time and I said, Coach, my name is not Mike and I'm not going to be a Seminole. Now, right after that meeting, I called my head coach, Rob Laverne at Washington Marion, and I said, let's try to call LSU and try to get a visit next weekend to go to LSU. So we called Curly Hallman, who's the head coach, and this was on Sunday when I got back to Lake Charles. And that Tuesday, Curly Hallman and Larry Edmondson, who was a wide receiver coach at the time, they showed up at my house on Tuesday. And that weekend, I had an official visit to LSU. And when I showed up at LSU, I've been here ever since. I played my three years at LSU. I left as a junior. And I had a, a great time. We we didn't win the first two seasons I was here, like 93, 94. You know, we, we, didn't, we didn't have so, so good seasons, but I gained some great relationships with some great teammates. And at the end of my, or at the beginning of my junior year, uh, I started to really understand that football could change the dynamics of my family. And I'm talking in every sense of the word financially, spiritually, uh, morally, you know, everything. Because uh, I would see guys who played before me, they would leave, go to the National Football League, or even uh, my good friend Shaq, you know, he was drafted in 92 from LSU, you know, going to Orlando Magic, and just seeing all of those dynamics of guys leaving college or LSU and then going play and making a dramatic change in their life in every sense of the word. And I really begin to understand that I can go to the night or potentially go to the National Football League and make a great living. Well, Curly gets fired my junior year, going into my junior year. Jared Donato comes in, and we had that season. We called it Bringing Back the Magic. And probably all of the younger listeners probably would have to go and Google Bringing Back the Magic. Anyone that's probably. 29 years old or younger probably have to go look it up so we brought back the magic that 95 season we go play in a pull on weed eater independence bowl we win that game and lsu football just kind of takes off from there and you guys know where lsu football is today winning multiple bowl games national championships that year brought back the magic well i then Finish up my junior year, I get drafted by the St. Louis Rams, first round, 18th pick. And I retired my mother on draft day. After I got off the phone with Rich Brooks at the time, who was the head coach of St. Louis Rams, I told my mother to call her job that she had just put in her two weeks notice. Well, it was fascinating two weeks because she never went back to work. But it changed the dynamics of who I was, my family. I played 13 years in the National Football League. I played with the St. Louis Rams. I played with the New Orleans Saints. I played with the Chicago Bears. I played with the Denver Broncos. And then ultimately my last eight seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs. 
and I retired as a Kansas City Chief. Moving forward, 15 years later, I've been retired. Uh, I get an opportunity to come back to be the director of player development with LSU football in 2020. And uh, I'm currently uh, working uh, with LSU athletics, with LSU sports properties. And over the last year and a half, two years, this podcast has been on my heart. God put it on my heart. Uh, I know a lot of things happen with a lot of current players with NIL deals and all of these fun things. And this idea was put on uh, my heart to bring back legends, former LSU legends from all sports, not just football. So you will see and hear guests from every sport uh, that LSU has to offer on this podcast, telling their story, kind of like how I just told you guys mine and how they got here and what they're doing now. And uh, we will have so much fun. We will dive into stories. We call them locker room talk. And I know a lot of people uh, back in our day, we didn't have cameras and microphones and everything in the locker room. And it was always asked, you know, man, what happened after the game? What was said? What goes on after practice in the locker rooms? And now we won't be able to tell every story, but we will be able to tell some stories and some fun memories that we all had and shared as teammates. And we went off and played in the National Football League or Major League Baseball or uh, swimming and diving or the Olympics or track and field, all of those things. This will be a fun podcast. And I'm so excited uh, that I've had the opportunity to start this up and, uh, and have uh, people around me, I call them my villagers, around me to help with the idea and the process of making this. So with that being said, I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, I encourage you to go out and like, subscribe, share, tell your family and friends about it. Even your, your, your grandmother and grandfather who are LSU uh, listeners and lovers of LSU athletics, that they will be able to enjoy this show and uh, enjoy some great stories that we're going to tell. And I'll end it with this. If no one has told you today, let me be the first to tell you. I love you with the love of Christ. There's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. And be a light that shines so bright today that it has the impact to save someone's life. Until next time, everyone, peace and love. Go to Legends fans, we ask that you subscribe, like, share, tell everybody who's an LSU fan, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your cousin, sister, everybody. Share this with them, have them do the same, and I promise you, y'all won't regret being a part of the Go To Legends podcast. The struggle, the hustle, the blood, the sweat, the tears from the L's you took, don't forget. The rival of the fittest, the cheers, the rings and bucks. Now legendary status, that's what's up. The struggle, the hustle, the blood, the sweat, the tears from the L's you took, don't forget. The rival of the fittest, the cheers, the rings and bucks. Now legendary status, that's what's up.